Hey bears, it's Bear again. I thought it was about time that I also cover just things that I've learned from having one of these books and mistakes that you can avoid when it comes to owning a decent set of gel pens. Probably the first mistake that I made was actually not deciding what medium I was going to use. So the first picture that I coloured in was actually just using some really old colouring pencils that I had. They were just really poor quality so they weren't really nice to hold. If I was going to use colouring pencils again I'd probably invest in something better from a brand like Castle Arts akin to colouring pencils like the ones that Prismacolor make. So I would just expect a picture to take longer than if you use gel pens and don't be surprised if you end up with a cramp. I've never had a problem with smearing any of my gel pen pictures but then you can also if it's a lines or a dots picture it's quite easy to make sure that you just colour in one direction with a spiral. You have to just make sure that you keep your hand off the page you're colouring outwards in and so it is a bit more tempting to rest your hand on the page in order to do that. Sometimes I just find spiral pictures are easiest to colour in if you actually stand up while you're doing them. Something to be aware of if you're buying a gel pen set like Castle Arts gel pen set. They have different types of pens with 6 swell pens, 17 metallics, 15 pastels, 14 glitter neon and 16 neons. They've got six classic pens. As well. Those types of pen they'll also have different nib sizes so the swells are 0.8 millimeter. The glitters like I used for the first spiral picture that I did have one millimeter nib. If you do use your pens to color in other things that makes them really handy for blending. I don't do any blending. I mainly like the one millimeters because it just means that the ink flows out really quickly but it can also run out. It can also flow so quick that the pen actually runs out sooner than you might expect. If you've got a very dense spiral and you use a one millimeter pen you might find that all of the ink is gone before you actually make it to the center. If you tip the pen rather than holding the pen straight down you might find that that helps slow the ink down a little bit. Also if you want to drag the pen in one motion rather than back and forth that would kind of avoid going over parts that you've already colored and wasting any ink that way. Normally I would go for like a smaller nib size for a dots picture but if there's the equivalent of like a lot of white space in the inner dots picture then I think you can get away with using a one millimeter pen. But at the end of the day if you're doing this relaxation you don't really want to have to overthink your technique too much. When I bought my Castle Arts gel pen set I knew in advance that there weren't any refills without buying another set and that there were very few duplicates in the set and so that with each pen that once the color is gone the color is gone. Based on the picture that I'm about to color in now I sort of know which pens are best. The next picture I used a 0.8 millimeter pastel and although that had a smaller nib and so I expected the ink to last a bit longer, lines pictures do use up a lot of ink because despite all of the negative space you are basically colouring in the entire page and so the pen that I was using did actually run out right near the top of the picture which was a shame. I did then go over the darkest parts of the picture with that second pen to try and lift certain parts of the picture to maybe make that a little less obvious. It's not the end of the world but ideally I think these illusions work best when they're in one colour and so ideally you would make it to the end of the picture with the same colour pen if you don't have a refill or a duplicate in the set that you buy. The easiest way around this if I was going to do it again would actually just be to buy two castle art sets at the start and then you know that you've always got a backup for the colour that you're using. For the next picture that I did I coloured in another spiral and I went for a one millimeter glitter again. I was live streaming at the time so also if you're curious to know anything about how I actually turn all of these sessions into videos I had to learn how to edit them, how to make time lapses, I was filming on my phone, I don't have any camera lighting and I was trying to create like a white box studio effect and I sort of managed to do that so if you want to know how I achieve any of those things as well just let me know and I'm happy to also record something explaining how I actually set everything up to film and edit. One thing I do always try to remember to do is to put a piece of card behind the page when I so I've never had a problem with bleed it's not a bad idea just in case but if you flip the page over you can see that there's something colored there on the other side but the paper isn't so thin that the pen goes all the way through the page or anything because gel pens are a wet medium it does make the page ripple a little bit though so you just might want to have a piece of card so that you don't get any moisture on the the picture underneath. The only way to really color in a spiral picture wrong would be if you started coloring from the outside in and then you lost the line and accidentally started coloring in what's meant to be like negative space instead and even then that wouldn't be wrong per se it just would make the illusion like quite hard to see and if you colored something from the inside out without meaning to and it looked 
kind of like an x-ray even that's not really a problem because you could then just take another color and color in the lines that you were supposed to inside the spiral and that would still bring out the original picture so there weren't any big lessons to learn from this picture i used a 0.8 millimeter metallic pen which was fine but the finished picture the picture that they chose and the spiral that they turned it into in the book itself so sometimes you'll have a picture if you buy a book like this where you couldn't have really made the end result any better so after the disaster i had with the first lines picture that i colored where my pen ran out in the middle and i couldn't match the purple i went for a 0.6 millimeter pen for the next lines picture that i did and that worked out really well i was able to do the entire picture in a really strong dark green and i think i had ink left over as well i think i was able to then use that pen for like greeting cards really good for lines and details and notes and writing and i do like using them for lines and dots pictures that i know are going to take a long time in the first place you have a bit more control over how much ink is coming out of the pen and this was also where i discovered i could then make a decision when i got to the top of the page about whether i wanted my way back down the page in the same color or if i could see inside the pen that there was hardly any ink left that maybe i'd want to intentionally alternate colors that's also something that you can check before coloring a picture is actually put your pens side by side and actually look at how much how much gel i should say i guess is inside the castle art is pretty good like i think all of the pens are pretty consistent uh, it was one or two pens where it really looked like only half the pen had been filled and there was clearly like a lot less ink in there to start with and so obviously you would expect that to run out sooner rather than later and maybe catch you out the other thing if you want to make the most of your ink is also just to be really careful not to create any air bubbles so i try not to throw the whole set around or and i try not to drop the pens themselves but also if you're a fidgeter you don't want to tap because that could create an air bubble in the middle and anything below that you'll just never be able to get to that ink so it's just a waste of the the rest of the ink that's in the cartridge because it can't get past the air bubble the same goes for having a problem with ink flow and i think it's just a natural human instinct that the first thing most people would do i think is they like tap the pen or, or they sort of like hit the nib against the page to try and get the the ink to come out i haven't had a problem with any of the pens where none of them have had like an unexpected air bubble quality wise they've been good in that respect i haven't accidentally created any air bubbles and that's even though i i can be quite clumsy sometimes and in terms of ink flow generally as well they've also been really good so a one millimeter nib size the ink will flow a lot quicker and easier than with a 0.6 millimeter and sometimes you want the ink to come out less slowly but on the whole the ink flow has been really reliable because my memory of using gel pens as a child was that it was actually like quite a frustrating experience like my memory of using gel pens to do crafts when i was younger was that you would start writing or keep stopping and starting the ink flow with the castle arts gel pens has been really good on the whole i can't think of any occasions where i couldn't get anything out of the pen 